Look, my name's up there. I have been a full-time YouTube content creator for two months now, and I've been absolutely loving it. And in only two months, I've put out 20 videos, which means on average, it's about two to three videos a week. And it's actually a very sustainable pace for me. I'm gonna forewarn you, the office is a mess. I haven't had time to clean up after all my trips. Going for the classic. So, the other day, a friend of mine, when I was on the trip, was asking, how in the world are you putting out so much videos on your YouTube channel? And at first I was like, I don't know, just scripting the videos, filming them, editing them. It's what I'm doing for a full-time job now. But then it got me thinking, well, what are actually the reasons why I've been able to edit so fast? And then after doing some thinking, I realized that the reason why I'm able to edit so fast is, is because I use a whole ton of assets. And that's right, I'm not that much of a creative genius as you might think. I just utilize a lot of great assets. So that's why I thought that in today's video, we'd discuss five assets that I use on a daily basis in all of my YouTube videos in order for me to edit faster. And as a disclaimer, this video is not sponsored. I'm not being paid by any of these companies or people to talk about these assets. They're actually what I use every single day when I'm making my YouTube videos on this channel. But if you do want to invest in these five different assets, I'm going to link them all in my description and consider it one way that you can support my channel. So the first asset that I am using on a daily basis is Epidemic Sound. And you guys have heard me talking about them all the time because they're actually a long-term sponsor of this channel, but today they're not even sponsoring this episode, but they are an asset that I use on a daily basis when I'm editing my videos. If you haven't yet heard about Epidemic Sound, which I would be quite surprised if you haven't, it is basically a music song licensing platform. If you are a new creator, you might not know, but you actually do need to license all of your music. That means anything you create for social media, for YouTube, for commercial projects, you've got to license the music because that's the legit way of doing things. It'd be like you being a photographer or a videographer and someone just used your photos or video footage in their projects without ever paying you or licensing them. That's the same feeling that artists have when we use music that's not licensed. Finding music for your project can actually be one of the most time consuming steps of the whole process because you don't wanna use mediocre music. You want music that fits the project and just makes it come alive with emotion. Some of the artists that I'm really enjoying on Epidemic Sound right now are Oi, Yamodi, AGST, and one of my newest favorites, let me pronounce it, Luwax. I love their music. And small side note, make sure you don't choose music that has this la-di-da, you know, kind of monotonous. If you notice after 30 seconds that you're already getting bored by your music, don't use that song. It's gonna make your project very boring. Find dynamic, catchy music that you just notice yourself whistling or humming to after a long day of editing. That's the kind of music you want for your projects. Also, if you really wanna be faster at editing your YouTube videos, don't go out and try to find music every single time you're about to edit a video. That's gonna be slow and you're gonna probably end up cutting corners and choosing music that's not the best because you're just in a rush to start editing. I find it really helpful to spend one day where I just search through the whole library of Epidemic Sound and I just download a whole bunch of clips that I can use for, you know, epic B-roll sequences or talking head shots. That way, when I start the new project, I can quickly choose from this library of songs that I've already chosen for my channel. Tips for navigating through Epidemic Sound. A lot of people don't know, but you can actually use the keyboard arrows to just quickly go up and down through the list of songs and you can use left and right to skim. I think it jumps 15 or 30 seconds at a time, so you can quickly skim through the whole song and see is it gonna be one of those la-di-da-di-da songs or is it gonna be a dynamic song that's going up and down with a whole bunch of different parts to use for your video. On top of great music, Epidemic Sound as well has a huge library of sound effects and if you really want your videos to come alive, make sure you're using them, especially with animations or text. I find that just adding a few sound effects really makes the animation come alive. I know for myself, it's often a step that I can skip, especially when I'm getting lazier or I'm in a rush, 
but it's so crucial to the project. So yeah, asset number one, Epidemic Sound. It's the place to get music for your YouTube videos. And if you're not yet signed up, you can click the link in my description and you'll actually get a 30 day free trial, meaning you can test out Epidemic Sound for a whole month, see if you enjoy it, if you're liking the music and you don't even have to pay a dime. Asset number two that I'm using on a daily basis to edit my YouTube videos faster is an adjustment layer. For some odd reason, Final Cut Pro doesn't have like a built-in native adjustment layer, so I had to actually search and find a work around this. But luckily there are a whole bunch of more tech savvy people than I am who have created these adjustment layers that you can use in Final Cut Pro. I downloaded mine from a creator named Ryan Nangle who has an amazing YouTube tutorial channel. I'll make sure to link the adjustment layer down below in the description so that you guys can download it for your own use. With this adjustment layer, I'm able to add my creative LUTs onto an adjustment layer, grading my whole project rather than having to one by one grade every single clip. And that's where we come to asset number three that I use to edit faster my YouTube videos, and that's LUTs. In order to grade my videos fast, I'm always putting an adjustment layer on the whole project. I might have different adjustment layers depending on what kind of footage there is. So I might have an adjustment layer for the B-roll sequences if I'm filming at 120 frames per second. I might have an adjustment layer for the talking head shots and then adjustment layer for the drone shots because they all require different grades and different adjustments. For each adjustment layer, I add two custom LUTs that are built into Final Cut Pro. And on the first adjustment layer, I actually use the corrective LUTs from my brother since he's created great corrective LUTs for Sony cameras. And on my Sony camera, I am filming with the S-Log3 and S-Cine tone. So I choose that corrective LUT to get it back to Rec. 709. And then from there, I add my own Cine LUTs. And the one that I love using is the Cine Perfect Skin Tones. It gives this kind of desaturated, tanned look. I really like that look. I like very warm colors, maybe leaning more towards the green tint. And I very much so like desaturated greens. I do not want bright greens. I do not want bright blues in my shots. I want a more desaturated look. So if you're interested in that look, you can click the link in my description and you can purchase my Cine LUTs for 20 bucks. And as well, I'll make sure to link my brother's Sony corrective LUTs and his LUT pack as well. Once I've got on the adjustment layer, the two custom LUTs with the corrective LUT and then my perfect skinny tones LUT, then I just go one by one through every single clip and just do some minor adjustments with exposure and white balance, but that's really it. It's a really fast process and I need it to be fast because I'm creating a lot of videos in a week. And to be honest, I don't need it to be perfect. I want it to be like 80% graded and color corrected, but it doesn't need to be perfect like a commercial that I would create for a company. That's kind of the nature of YouTube. As my brother often says, done is better than perfect. All right, asset number four is motion VFX. If there's one thing that I really appreciate in videos, it's titles. I love all sorts of motion graphics and titles that people create in their videos or even in Hollywood films, but the problem is that I am horrible at them. I am a terrible graphic designer and I'm a terrible motion graphics designer, which means I have a hard time creating titles and most of the time I haven't been creating my own. Thankfully, the good people at Motion VFX have created an enormous amount of different assets that you can use in Final Cut Pro. Basically, the moment we switched over to Final Cut Pro, I started using Motion VFX and it has been an absolute game changer when it comes to creating YouTube videos because it's just so dang fast and easy to use. Three assets that I'm using on a daily basis for Motion VFX are the M Callouts High Tech, the M Channel Modern, and then the M Channel Clean. The M Callouts High Tech are the motion graphics that I'm using often to attach to a certain thing like a car or a building and you get these cool lines that come out and you can add text. And the cool part about this is that you can literally just throw in the motion graphic to your video and then with the little circle dot, you just attach it somewhere and press track and literally in seconds, you have a motion graphics title tracked to something in your video, which would have back in the day taken so long for me in Premiere to open up After Effects, then do the tracking, then create the title, attach it to the tracking. And it was just a long process that I would not have the time for with my YouTube videos. Then I'm using M Channel Modern, which has a whole bunch of different assets, but predominantly I'm using that pack for the different backgrounds. 
I don't know if you remember the 10 life lessons I created for my birthday video. I was using the background assets from this pack in the whole video and I thought they turned out really nice. So a really easy way to add text onto a background and break up your talking points by introducing the point with a graphic motion and text. And lastly, I'm using M Channel Clean and in this pack, it has all these really amazing lower third assets which I'm often using for showing off what music I'm using with Epidemic Sound or doing call outs for my channel. I'm really enjoying these packs from Motion VFX. It is honestly sped up the whole process so much. I'll make sure to as well link those down below and you can purchase them through my link. And now the last and final asset, number five, Maddie's Audio Presets. If there's one area or department of videography filmmaking that I hate and I'm terrible at, it's sound. And it's probably many of your guys' similar situation where you spend a lot of time learning how to shoot photos or video, but then sound is one of those areas where you're like, I'm just gonna avoid that like a plague. For me, I don't have an ounce of musical talent in me, so it's very hard for me to figure out how to just do this whole sound thing. That's why I love using Maddie's audio presets because he hired a sound engineer to create audio presets that people like me can use to get good audio in their videos. In the audio preset pack, there is audio presets for both male and female, and that's broken then down into outdoor and indoor, and then it has bright, damp, and normal, and in each of those it has heavy, medium, light. Sounds confusing, but when you get the pack, you'll see it's very well organized. I'm personally using the outdoor normal and indoor normal with light versions, so I find that that works best with my voice and audio that I'm using in my videos. Using the presets is as simple as just drag and drop and then just adjusting the volume so that they're not clipping. It saves so much time when it comes to the audio processing of my YouTube videos. Maddie's audio presets are available for both Final Cut Pro and Adobe Premiere Pro, and I'll make sure to link it in my description. All right, there we go. You guys got the full in-depth behind the scenes picture of all the assets I'm using when I'm creating my YouTube videos that are allowing me to film and edit so much faster. Ooh, I forgot to open up this box. Should we open it? I think I should treat myself to an unboxing moment after filming this video. This is dangerous for mess. Ah, Daddy t-shirt, Daddy candies. Ooh, this is interesting. This is the USB podcast kit. Is this a sign that I should start a podcast? Dady, thank you so much for sending me that podcast, Mike. Is this a sign? Maybe I should start my own podcast. That's funny, I also didn't see this in the box. Quiet, please recording in progress. I can put that on my outside door.